Hey everyone, this is Asian here, and welcome back to AP Human Geography. We're going to be getting the 3.7 Diffusion of Religion and Culture. So let's get right into this. No prerequisite terms. Um, everything that you need to know is basically going to be covered in this video. So here we go. We'll start with the isogloss, which is boundaries that separate regions with unlike linguistic features. Uh, there'll be some features that are alike. However, uh, there'll be some that aren't alike, and those are your isoglosses. The map shows an isogloss. This is actually a dialect, too. A dialect is where there's one language. However, uh, depending on where you are, that language will have different pronunciations or a different way it is written. Uh, so this map is an isogloss, and it's also a dialect. Uh, because the isogloss, it shows the boundary of where they say you guys and y'all. However, the dialect is saying you guys or y'all. It's basically just pointing out to multiple people. Now, a dialect can also be written. So in uh, Britain, in the United States, you still say theater. Of course, with the different accents. But it's still theater. However, it is written differently. That is also a dialect. And you can also show that out in isogloss. Now, an isogloss, an isogloss can be, be this advanced as well. It doesn't have to be this simple. It can be this advanced as well. Now, let's get into language families, which is a group of languages that are all related through a parent language. Language families form a language tree. And a language tree can look like this, something you put in your biology or genetics class uh, when you're making a family tree. However, it's for languages. This language family is actually Indo-European. And then we have our language branches. We have our uh, Slavic, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. You can't see the Romance languages on here. We also have Eastern, we have East, uh, Baltic or Baltic. I don't know how to pronounce those. Uh, but this is a language family. A language family can also form an actual tree like this. And then the trunk of the tree is going to be your language family. Now, your language branches, of course, are going to be your branches. So we have our Slavic languages. We also have Germanic languages. Uh, we also have Romance languages. You can see them now i think my mouth you can see my mouse so there's our romance languages then we have our language is going to be the group of leaves we have russian circle but there's also spanish portuguese italian english uh german french uh all the other uh indo-european languages on here and then oh, i like to say that the leaves are our dialects or our words that make up the language uh, you can disagree with me if you like. That's not something you need to know. But I do like to point out that I think the leaves are kind of your words or your dialects inside the language. So the dialects make up the language, and the language makes up the branch, and the branches makes up the family. And of course, we have our leaves makes up the branches, and then our branches makes up the tree. So it's like the same thing. That's why we have language family trees. It's just easy to do. All right, let's get into some language families. I think there's like six or seven we're going to go over. Uh, we already went through one, which is Indo-European. So we have our languages like English, Fran uh, French, uh, German, Portuguese, Hindi. So that's the Indo-European language. Here we got Austronesian uh, language family. You can kind of see where this is based. I don't, I didn't think of it. I didn't look up any languages in this language family. So if you know any, that's great. Uh, but as you can see here, it's primarily based in Indonesia, basically Southeast Asia, and then Madagascar, which is a part of Africa. So we have, you know, Madagascar, and we have Southeast Asia. Asia, we have a little bit of northern New Zealand as well. We have Malaysia, Taiwan, Philippines, Indonesia. Those are our main countries here. Now, the hearth. A language will diffuse from a hearth, which is kind of where a language family or religion, we'll get that in just a second, uh, will form and begin. So here I made the, uh, the hearth. I chose this map because the hearth was a different color. So figure out where the hearth uh, was or is. Right. So it's going to be here in Taiwan. This is going to be the hearth. And then it diffused. You can kind of tell it kind of diffused from relocation diffusion. Uh, they, they migrated to other parts of Southeast Asia and Madagascar. And that's how the language family has spread. Most of the time, this is going to be through relocation diffusion of language families. A uh, religion will be through relocation and contagious diffusion. We'll get in that in a little bit. Trans New Guinea. This is basically the Austrian, the Southeast Asia um, that is not Austronesian. Uh, it's Trans New Guinea, and it's just kind of the other parts of Indonesia right there. And you can tell where the hearth is for that. Pretty pretty simple. Sino Tibetan. All right. So the red is where the language is spoken the most, and then the green. Uh, is where it is spoken the least. So the lime is spoken the least. And you can probably tell, okay, a language that's already part of Sino-Tibetan, which is Mandarin. And Mandarin's hearth is in China. Uh, this is kind of in northern China, uh, the Sino-Tibetan uh, hearth. 
Now you can also sell, okay, but it's, ta- uh, sorry, spoken around the world. Well, Mandarin, as you know, is the most popular language in the world. And then people have communication with China. Some people use Mandarin as, Mandarin as a lingua franca. I believe that's how you pronounce that too. Uh, so it's no surprise that it is spoken around the world. And of course, China is very densely populated, so there's going to be some very dark red on this map. But that is Sino-Tibetan. Niger Congo, even though Niger Niger is not highlighted pink or violet or however you want to say your color. This may look yellow for colorblind people. I don't know. However, Niger Congo, we kind of got a lot of middle and a little bit of southern Africa. We got like Tanzania in here, Nigeria uh, as highlighted there. Niger Congo languages, if you know any languages in Africa, uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head either. Uh, but that's where they're going to be. Kind of see where this is highlighted and kind of get an idea. You're not getting that um, southwestern part of Africa, nor you're getting the northern parts as well. Now, the opposite of Niger Congo, I like to say, uh, sorry, the hearth uh, is uh, western Africa. Now, the opposite of Niger Congo is your Afro-Asiatic. Uh, we have Africa, and then we have Asia, and they are part of this one language family, so that's why it's called Afro-Asiatic. Basically, this is northern Africa, and then a little bit of Asia, the Middle East. We have uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and part of Africa. We have Morocco, uh, Egypt, um, Algeria as well, uh, and those are your Afro-Asiatic languages. Uh, there's those Middle Eastern uh, languages. Um, Arabic might be part of Afro-Asiatic. It might not be as well. I believe it is. Don't take my word on that, though. Uh, now, we'll see a uh, similarity of the diffusion of the uh, Muslim religion, Islam. We'll see a similarity in diffusion to this. We'll see it go over northern Africa and then around the Middle East. Uh, and in the heart of Afro-Asiatic is in Saudi Arabia. And then it diffused through relocation diffusion to Africa. Because you can see it's close together. They could just migrate over there. All right. What was choice question practice? Which of the following countries would most likely have a trans-New Guinea language spoken? The correct answer is B, Indonesia. Uh, New Zealand would have either Austronesian or Indo-European. Uh, not Trans-New Guinea. If you remember looking at the map, we didn't see New Zealand on there. Uh, Indonesia was on there. India wasn't. India has prim- primarily Hindi, which is Indo-European. Uh, Portugal uh, has Portuguese, and that's also Indo-European. And then Taiwan is Austronesian. Uh, yeah, Austronesian. And so that leaves Indonesia. Indonesia is Austronesian. It's primarily Austronesian, actually. However, it's the only country uh, here on our multiple choice question practice that has Trans New Guinea languages primarily spoken. All right, now let's get into religion. So we learned uh, with languages that they'll diffuse from their hearth, and I guess it would, and it would depend. Uh, how it would diffuse. A lot of times it was through relocation diffusion. However, I want to point out that Indo-European, uh, why did that diffuse around the world? How did that diffuse to Northern and Southern and Southern America? Not like the country, the continents, probably just said North and South America, but how did it diffuse there? It got to Australia. Well, things uh, caused diffusion. You probably have learned this already, but there was uh, imperialism and colonization through many European countries, of course, Spain, France, and especially the United Kingdom, uh, those languages that they speak, so French, English, Spanish, are primary primary languages of North America, South America, and Australia. Uh, and that's caused by relocation, contagious fusion, uh, and some other types of diffusion as well. Uh, stimulus diffusion, if you think about it, uh, from some ways words are spoken in the United States to the United Kingdom, Britain, whatever you like to call it. Now we're topping into religion. So, you can look at this map and kind of see where the religions are primarily located. Please understand this. Please understand this map and where religions are primarily located. I do want to point out China. Even though it is unaffiliated, it has a lot of Buddhism in it. So, if you see China, it's probably going to have Buddhism. If asked for China, primarily it'll be Buddhism. Because you can see here, we have uh, Thailand, uh, we have Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam, Buddhism. China's right above it. It's most likely Buddhism. Uh, if you're looking for Judaism, look at Israel. Uh, Israel had a bunch of Judaism after World War II, of course, when uh, Jewish people were escaping Germany. And then look at uh, Islam, which is green. You can see that there's a similarity between uh, Afro-Asiatic diffusion and the Islam religion. It's a bunch of Northern Africa. 
So when uh, the people from the Middle East went to Africa, they probably bought, brought the religion and the language family with them. Those are some conclusions that can be made by those two maps we've looked at. Uh, and then let's look into Christianity. <laughs> Uh, like Indo and like Indo-European languages, Christianity diffused around the world. Uh, northern, south, north, and South America. I gotta be better at that. A bunch of your, a bunch of Africa, Australia, Russia, and almost all of Europe. Uh, Christianity diffused there. Now the Christianity hearth is going to be, uh, kind of near Israel, I believe. I don't know where Christianity's hearth is. I probably should know this, though. However, why is it not there now? Think about that for a second. We don't see Christianity now. Like I said, uh, Judaism took over a bunch of Israel. Uh, and then we have Islam around that area. Christianity is older than Islam. So when Christianity diffused, uh, if it was diffused by relocation diffusion, there's going to be less people there who are a part of Christianity. And then when Islam blew up, it would have taken over the area and become primarily Islam. Of course, you would still have your Christianity people there. Uh, so that is something to think about. Uh, Hinduism, which is part of uh, Nepal and uh, India mostly, is going to be one of the oldest, uh, sorry, one of the oldest religions. My thoughts are not coming to my mind as quick as I want them to to. to. So it's not diffusing as well. Now, if you're thinking, okay, it's older, shouldn't it diffuse as well? Well, we have Buddhism around here. And we'll learn about universalizing religions and ethnic religions in just a second. And that'll explain why Hindi Hinduism is not diffusing as much as uh, Buddhism or Christianity or Islam is. And why Judaism isn't diffusing as much as a lot of these other religions are. Now, universalizing religions are religions that appeal to all people at a global scale. And pay attention to what these religions are. Christianity, global scale. Christianity is literally in every single continent. Buddhism, Islam, and Sikhism. These are our four universalized religions that you're going to have to know. And these are the four religions that take up most of the map we just saw. I wouldn't see Sikhism on there because uh, it's not that big of a religion. It's just kind of something you need to know as a thing. However, uh, you don't see Hinduism and Judaism on there. Because they're not universalizing, of course. However, they're also not diffusing as much. Since universalizing uh, religions are appealing to people at a global scale, it's of course going to spread out more and diffuse more than uh, ethnic religions, which is what Hinduism and Judaism are. Uh, let's get into these four religions, though. We're going to learn a little bit about them. So Christianity. Uh, the hearth is in Jerusalem. I knew that when I wrote it down, but I forgot it. Uh, it was formed when a Jewish teacher named Jesus... I probably should put a comma or something there, was believed to be the son of God and the savior of humans. Uh, the, uh, the religion is monotheistic. Uh, that means they believe in one God. Uh, their sacred text is the Holy Bible. And it is spread through uh, different types of diffusion. Contagious diffusion. Uh, an example would be through missionaries. So one missionary could go to someone's house, uh, preach about Christianity, and then four to ten people or something could now be Christians. Hierarchical diffusion. I hope I said that right. Uh, example would be forced upon by rulers. Uh, so maybe you live in a country and the rules like, you guys have to be Christians or your heads will be cut off. And then, of course, through relocation infusion, which is pretty easy. Migration. All right, let's get into Buddhism. Uh, the hearth is going to be uh, Nepal. Uh, Siddhartha, a prince, taught that you need to escape the cycle of suffering. So he taught around the area, and then those teachings uh, didn't diffuse, especially down the Silk Road. That... Uh, diffuse Buddhism into China, uh, but they said you need to escape the cycle of suffering. Uh, Buddhism is neither monotheism, non monotheistic, or polytheistic, so they don't believe in one or multiple gods. Uh, and their sacred text is, I'm not going to pronounce that, but you can read that on there. And now it's spread through contagious diffusion, uh, through teachings, and then relocation diffusion. And this is very contemporary. Buddhism is diffusing a lot. So there's a lot of relocation diffusion of Buddhism. And that's happening a lot. Now, of course, it's happened a lot back then. But it's really happening more now. Islam. Uh, the hearth is going to be in Saudi Arabia. Allah, who it, which means God, uh, shared information to the prophets who made uh, Quran, or Quran, which are the holy writings to the Islam. 
Uh, it is a monotheistic religion. They believe in Allah as the God. And then their sacred text is Quran. And it spread through contagious diffusion. Uh, trade was a big part of spreading Islam. And then relocation diffusion, especially from the Middle East to uh, a bunch of Western Asia and then Northern Africa. Now let's get into Sikhism, which is uh, the hearts in Northern India, under, under Nepal though. Uh, one God is the creator of the universe, and life is precious and should not be wasted. Uh, I hope I've got some good summary. This is probably the worst summary out of all six religions. Uh, it is a monotheistic religion, and its Adi Granth is its sacred text. And it's spread through contagious diffusion, missionaries, and through relocation, diffusion, migration. Now let's get into our ethnic religions, which is religions appealing to one group, typically a related one. So we have Hinduism and Judaism as our ethnic religions. They're not going to diffuse as much as our universalizing religions, especially Christianity. All right, Hinduism is the heart that's in northern India, just like Sikhism. Uh, there are consequences now and later for your life's actions, and there is a righteous path. Uh, there are righteous paths to reach uh, their god or gods. Uh, it is polytheistic. They believe in multiple gods, millions of gods, actually. And they are uh, followed by the books of knowledge as their sacred texts. Uh, it spread through contagious diffusion and through relocation diffusion. Relocation fusion is more contemporary. Uh, I've seen a lot of migration patterns from India uh, in the past while. I've been looking at past news articles for current events for AP Human Geography. And I've seen a lot of Hinduism diffusion, especially to America. Uh, brain drain is pretty common there uh, from Unit 2 if you remember what brain drains were. Now let's get into Judaism. Uh, the heart is in modern day Israel. It was called, I believe, like Mecca or something. Uh, the Messiah hasn't come yet, and God communicates through the prophets. That's what they believe in. So they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah like uh, Christians do. Uh, and then God communicates through the prophets. And then someday there will be a Messiah. See how I use the word yet. Uh, it is a monotheistic religion. They believe in God, nothing else. And then their uh, sacred text is the Tanaka or Tanaki. Correct me somewhere. Uh, and it's spread through relocation diffusion. Now let's get to multiple choice question practice. Which of the following languages has been diffused through contagious diffusion through missionaries? So there may be some contagious diffusion here, but was it through missionaries primarily? The correct answer is Christianity. Uh, Islam didn't spread from missionaries that much. A lot of relocation diffusion. Uh, Judaism hasn't gone through contagious diffusion, just relocation diffusion. And then Hinduism, also an ethnic religion like Judaism, so it's not going to spread through much contagious diffusion. It did spread through contagious diffusion, but not through uh, primarily missionaries. And then Buddhism was through a lot of teachings when they did uh, contagious diffusion. I wouldn't necessarily say missionaries with that. This could be a tough question. You probably won't see a question like this on your AP test. You might see something a little bit easier through a different type of diffusion. If it was hierarchical, hierarchical, it would be Christianity. So, visually representing diffusion. You can find diffusion on maps and charts and toponyms. Uh, think about this. Uh, McDonald's culture going to China. Uh, it's pretty big there, and there's a lot of McDonald's growing in China. You may see McDonald's toponyms. Uh, so, the sign, they say McDonald's toponyms. You'll see diffusion of McDonald's, an American uh, place. Or you can also see street names. Maybe you have a Chinatown, the Chinese culture going to San Francisco. You'll see Chinese street names or Chinese-like neighborhoods. Those are also toponyms. That's the end of the video. Complete the scale check in the description below. Please do it. It'll help you. There's an answer key. That's the second document as well. Do it.